Hello, welcome to Time to Talk. I'm Margie Holliman, and we are so glad that you could join us once again. Today is Wednesday, September 25th, 2019. Fall is here, mm -hmm. and we hope you are enjoying it. And we want to welcome as our guest today, we have three guests today, and they're all in collaboration. They work mm -hmm. for different programs, but they're all collaborating today, and we're talking about social justice and justice issues and access to justice. First, we have Marsha Osborne, who is the executive director of Jubilee Jobs. Marsha, it's good to have you with us on Time to Talk today. Well, thank you, RG. It's a pleasure to be here this evening. Thank you for coming. And we also have Dr. Bruce Roller, who is the executive director of UCOM, and UCOM stands for United Churches Outreach Ministry, right. and uh, they do a lot of great work in the community, especially the Southwest region of mm -hmm. Greater Grand Rapids. Mm -hmm. And we have Kamal uh, Standerford, who is a lawyer and professor at WMU Cooley Law School right here in Grand Rapids. And Kamal, it's good to have you here Thank as you well. Me. And Kamal is going to be talking about expungement issues and if you wonder what that is is uh, trying as much as you possibly can and legally available to you to get your criminal records mm -hmm. erased so that you can get a job mm -hmm. <laughs> and get housing and so many other things and, and maybe just turn your life around too yeah. so we're going to be talking about all these great things and all these great programs first we'll start with you Marcia uh, how long have you been at Jubilee Jobs? So I've been the executive director for seven years. Uh, prior to that, I served on our board. And um, prior to that, I was the auditor at Jubilee. Mm -hmm. So all together. Quite extensive work you were doing yeah, with Jubilee. Yeah, so it was um, really some building opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, again, seven years as executive director at Jubilee Jobs. Okay, and Jubilee Jobs does a lot more than help people with jobs, but of course that's one of your uh, main focuses. Uh, tell us what you do. Sure, so um, employment readiness, uh, services for both adults and youth. Um, we are also, uh, we provide adult literacy, specifically we call it our GED Cafe, and that is a prep program for uh, adults, we do have um, uh, services for as young as 16 year, 16 year olds with a special waiver from the Michigan Department of Education. Uh, we are a Pearson View authorized test center. So our students in our GED program can test right where they go to school. Mm -hmm. We also- Do you prepare them for the test? Mm -hmm. uh, we sure do, mm -hmm. we, we absolutely do. In addition to GED testing, we deliver hundreds of certification tests. Uh, recently, uh, we had an individual from the area come in and certify for Amazon supply chain. Mm -hmm. We also do Microsoft certifications, okay. so, um, that, that is a dynamic service. Um, we have after school programming for first through 12th grade students in collaboration with our co locating partner, the Creative Youth Center. Okay. And now, yes. are all of your programs loaded, located right in Baxter Community Center? Yes. 35 Baxter? We, we're on the third floor of the Baxter Community Center, mm -hmm. and we've been there for 30 years. <laughs> that's a long time. That's a long time. That, that, that's a very long yeah. time, yes, yeah. yes. And uh, Dr. Bruce, Rural Roller, tell us about UCOM and, and how the churches are coming together to help eliminate poverty. Yeah, UCOM, United Church Outreach Ministry, was 35 years ago um, a collection of the United Church of Christ congregations around Grand Rapids um, that had decided that they could do better together mm -hmm. rather than siloing and each one of them trying to do their own piece of social service. And so they um, came together forming an after-school program 
um, that went on for 30 plus years and then uh, also a food pantry that at one point was just a small food pantry in a local church mm -hmm. and now is in Wyoming located right in uh, the corner of Wyoming and we uh, are one of the largest food mm -hmm. pantries in West Michigan mm -hmm. and we do more than that because our, our our motto is eat healthy live healthy mm -hmm. and so we have um, a farm stand that has local uh, agricultural products all kinds of good things that people with low income can purchase they can use food stamps they can get double up bucks which means they get mm -hmm. twice the produce for um, the amount of money that they're spending on their food stamps. That really helps a lot. It, it, yeah, it, mm -hmm. it really does. And it gives people access. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. A huge number of the people that come to us um, say that they have more access to local good food mm -hmm. than, than they have had before we started the food stand two years ago. And that's so important because in many communities there, there may be a store but it's a liquor store, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and it's not selling fresh fruit and fresh vegetables, or they're selling things extremely high. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's good to especially have access to good food, mm -hmm. and then you also teach people how to garden? We do. Mm -hmm. We have a gardening program. We have uh, several community gardens uh, down at Marquette Park in our own parking lot. Uh, and we have probably 70 at this point, uh, four by four garden boxes that are raised that uh, people can do sitting down or standing if they want. Um, and that's right in their own backyard so mm -hmm. that they can grow um, their own food. And we have a support group of our urban farmers that come together once a month during the growing season. They get to hear from a farmer or a master gardener talk about a specific subject and then they get to share a meal and share some conversation around um, their own problems to be able to give tips mm -hmm. on gardening to each other mm -hmm. and then do you we, get youth involved in that we have a lot of young people my favorite my favorite young person story with that is the <laughs> father who told us that his two boys one a young teenager and the other one uh, younger uh, water each other but they their job was to go out and water the gardens every day and his his summation of that was that now instead of asking for potato chips or something when they come in from school they'll go out and get a tomato off the vine okay. and come and, and have that for their snack. So, okay. um, That's a yes, good story. young people mm -hmm. do get involved mm -hmm. and, and love being part of this mm -hmm. experience. Okay, great. And Kamal, uh, WMU Cooley University, Cooley Law University mm -hmm. is partnering with UCOM and also with Jubilee Jobs and you're specifically working on expungement. Tell us what expungement is and mm -hmm. what you're doing to help the community. Sure, sure. So uh, Cooley Law School has an in-house legal clinic called the Access to Justice Clinic and it helps people expunge uh, criminal convictions. Um, an expungement is essentially the removal of a criminal conviction from someone's public record. So we come across people that have uh, convictions uh, they've collected these convictions over a number of years and they're facing issues as far as employment, housing, um, and some people just simply want to move on from, from whatever happened back when the conviction um, occurred and they mm -hmm. come to us for assistance. Mm -hmm. And so what we try to do is we, we screen them for eligibility. So the law is very specific as to um, what requirements you need to satisfy in order to be eligible under the expungement mm -hmm. statute. Okay, and we what try is and the eligibility with them. Uh, requirement? Sure, sure. So the law is, there, there are essentially two main sections of the expungement statute. Um, in one section, the law allows a person uh, with no more than one felony and two misdemeanor convictions 
to potentially uh, expunge the felony conviction, assuming they meet some additional legal uh, requirements. How far back do they go? Uh, theoretically, it could be, you know, there's no uh, limit, okay. time restriction. Mm -hmm. okay. But again, there's a, it's a step-by-step -step process. Okay. Um, the, the first step is determining whether that person has okay. no more than one felony or two misdemeanor convictions. Okay. So one felony, two misdemeanors. Correct. And, and then certain then types of felonies don't qualify. That, that, that is, is correct. correct. That okay. is correct. So um, the ones that come to mind are offenses punishable by life. Uh, there are certain criminal sexual mm -hmm. conduct convictions that cannot be expunged. Um, Except for CSC4? Correct. There, 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 is, there is an exception under the expungement statute, which would theoretically allow a person to expunge a CSC4 conviction. Um, and again, there are some additional legal uh, mm -hmm. hurdles that that person needs to overcome. But okay. yes, you're right, theoretically. Or maybe if there were a certain age when it happened, something, yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe almost like maybe boyfriend, girlfriend, something um, like it, that. It's a bit more nuanced than that. Um, those types of cases, we really try and dig into the substance of the case. Um, in order to determine whether that person is eligible mm -hmm. because it's a, a little more complex than the traditional yeah. sure. um, client that we may have. Mm -hmm. um, the other big thing are traffic offenses. Uh, traffic offenses cannot be expunged under the expungement okay. statute. They stay with you, huh? Unfortunately, <laughs> um, okay. under the current statute, that may change at some point, mm -hmm. but as of right now, um, unfortunately for uh, people, those traffic offenses um, still remain on their record. And then um, there is a five-year wait period um, before you can even apply to have that conviction expunged. So uh -huh. even if I only have one felony and two misdemeanor convictions and the offense that I'm trying to expunge is an expungible offense, um, I still have to wait five years from either um, being discharged from probation from parole, mm -hmm. uh, released from imprisonment, or um, five years from the date of my sentence. It's essentially mm -hmm. whichever of those things that could last. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes do people not Absolutely. know, uh, like, okay, was that a felony? Yeah, maybe it happens so long ago. Was that a felony mm -hmm. or was that a misdemeanor? Mm -hmm. What was I charged with? Mm -hmm. Yeah, How do you yeah. find out? Yeah, we, yeah, we come across that a lot. Um, one of the things we do is we have people bring ten dollars to run an iChat. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's essentially a criminal background service mm -hmm. um, run by Michigan State Police, um, and quite frankly, anybody can do it. It's readily available on the on the internet. Um, so we put in their names, uh, date of birth, and based on you know the the information we put in a criminal history report is generated. Mm -hmm. And from that report, we can then determine what their, their criminal history looks like. Mm -hmm. And that certainly helps us in determining whether mm -hmm. they are potentially eligible or not. Um, and that's one of the things we do um, when we meet with, with uh, Jubilee Jobs uh, mm -hmm. on a monthly basis. Mm -hmm. Jubilee Jobs has kindly um, offered to help people run those iChats Mm -hmm. um, and that certainly helps us with the expungement process. Okay, mm -hmm. great. So tell us about how Jubilee Jobs uh, works with uh, Cooley Law School. Sure. So um, in 2014, uh, as a part of the Heart of West Michigan United Way Day of Caring, uh, we partnered at Jubilee with Cooley Law School and we held our very first expungement um, workshop um, and I use the the term workshop because we, we really are a clinic um, that very first event we held at uh, Wealthy Street Theater and it was it was just an overwhelming uh, response with individuals coming in we had a um, information session and then based on the information received, individuals would then uh, go and speak with 
uh, staff attorneys from Cooley, and then also students who were supervised by licensed attorneys. And um, one, one of the stories to take away from that very first uh, expungement event was uh, a lady, and she had been checking the box on job applications, uh, checking felony for years, 20 years. Mm -hmm. It's a long time. It's a long mm -hmm. time. And she came into the expungement event, that very first one, and we ran a criminal background in iChat, and she had never been sentenced. Oh. And so she was checking it when she didn't really have to check it. That's that's correct. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so it, it was it was amazing. Um, we we were we were stunned. She was stunned. We were happy. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm sure she was happy. <laughs> she was happy, and you know, and and then reflecting back on that experience, um, all of those uh, missed opportunities yeah. for this lady. Mm -hmm. But it was a very um, mm -hmm. good good result for yes. her and outcome. Because then she could move on with mm -hmm. her future. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, and mm -hmm. she had some clarity about that incident from 20 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's really important mm -hmm. um, during our clinics mm -hmm. when Kamau and the student attorneys pull that criminal background report, that mm -hmm. there's three segments to yeah. the report, and uh, Kamau, he can speak more mm -hmm. about those mm -hmm. three sections mm -hmm. of a criminal background report yeah. and what those mean. Yeah, Kamal, uh, and we'll let our viewers know you're watching Time to Talk. Today is Wednesday, mm -hmm. September mm -hmm. 25th, 2019, and we're talking about social justice issues and access to justice mm -hmm. as well, and everybody needs that. Uh, and okay. so we're talking to Marsha Osborne from Jubilee Jobs, Dr. Bruce Roller from UCOM Ministries, which is United <laughs> Churches of uh, Outreach, Outreach mm -hmm. Ministries, mm -hmm. and uh, also Kamau uh, from mm -hmm. w Kamau Standiford, who is a lawyer, staff attorney at WMU Cooley Law School, right here in Grand Rapids, and they also have other branches as well, That's in correct. Lansing? That's correct. Yes, mm -hmm. Battle yeah. Creek too, or no, no just Lansing? No. Um, there's one in Lansing, um, there's, um, there's one in Kalamazoo as well, Okay. In, in collaboration with Western Michigan University. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. but they're all working together, and that's very nice. And there's also one in Florida as well, believe it or not. Florida? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> yeah. They Tampa really Bay. expanded yeah. quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, so that's great. And so all three of these organizations are, are working together to help people to lift them up out of poverty, you know. Uh, when you're in poverty, there's so many different things that you're dealing with, mm -hmm. um, especially around social issues, food and clothing and mm -hmm. housing and, mm -hmm. and then justice. You know, people get caught up in the legal system and can't get out because they don't have money. <laughs> and mm -hmm. we see people with money many times <laughs> have all kinds of access sometimes that they don't mm -hmm. need. <laughs> and Archie, that's a wonderful point that um, you bring up. The legal clinics, um, and they're held monthly, uh, they are free of charge. Um, there is- Oh yes, good yeah, point, yeah. Wh Which is really important. And Cooley will walk with individuals who are eligible to have their records expunged or sealed um, from day one all the way through the court hearing in front of the judge. And then there's some follow-up uh, following that to make sure that all the paperwork is, is correct and buttoned up, if you mm -hmm. will. So. so it's so good that people can have access to professional attorneys. Mm -hmm. These are attorneys that, uh, in other cases, could get lots and lots of money for doing mm -hmm. this, uh, but they're doing this to help the community and doing it free of charge, 
Mm -hmm. uh, you just have to pay for your eye chat, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, which isn't too expensive. Just don't eat some Happy Meals, <laughs> those chicken sandwiches <laughs> and pop Oh, never mind. Uh, <laughs> but it's, it's affordable, you know, to have that eye chat run. Yeah, and how long does it take to, to do an eye chat? Well, and the, that's the, going through the state police record. Right, the, the eye chat itself, um, I would say, uh, it takes about 10 minutes mm -hmm. to run. So it's quick. Mm -hmm. Just because um, you want to make sure that when you're putting in the information, everything is accurate because um, you pay $10 regardless of you know what you put into the system. Mm -hmm. So if you make a mistake, it's going to generate a report that won't actually show what the actual mm -hmm. conviction is. Mm -hmm. So um, mm -hmm. you want to make sure that you get everything correct. Mm -hmm. um, there are some additional co costs associated with the expungement process, assuming that person is eligible, um, but it certainly isn't um, mm -hmm. significant, um, I would say. Yeah. So. And um, have you ever had, we're going to take a break in just a moment, but have you ever had people come in and it was a mistaken identity or somebody stole their identity and now you have a record? Yeah, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad you brought that up because obviously we've uh, focused on the eye chat a lot, but the eye chat can oftentimes have mm -hmm. errors on them, um, mm -hmm. and we've seen that over the years. Um, it's certainly, um, it's certainly something that has come up on a number of occasions where um, there is a conviction that shows up on the eye chat that doesn't belong to that person mm -hmm. or um, a conviction that is uh, classified as a felony when it's actually a misdemeanor. Um, things like that definitely come up mm -hmm. and um, we're able to, be, because we do additional research on top of running the eye chat, we can, um, more often times we can catch those mistakes um, if they come up on the eye chat. Mm -hmm. so. Have you heard of cases come out where uh, <clears throat> law enforcement or the judicial system, um, it's 90 days if you're in jail, maybe for something, it, maybe it started out as a misdemeanor in mm -hmm. a 90-day jail term, but they keep you 91 days, now you're in a felony status, is, is that correct? Um, well, generally felonies are punishable by more than one year um, in, in prison. Uh, misdemeanors tend to be anything punishable by less than one year. So in that scenario, um, we don't necessarily see things like that. Um, you know, things happen in the judicial system. Um, I'm not disputing the fact that, that something like that may have happened, mm -hmm. but generally speaking, um, the offenses are classified based on their severity. So, you know, you have 90-day misdemeanors, you have 93-day misdemeanors, um, you have one-year misdemeanors, you have misdemeanors which are called, they're called high court misdemeanors, but they're punishable by more than one year in prison. Okay. And then you have felonies which are the more um, mm -hmm. serious offenses. Okay. So. Thank you. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, then we're going to see a video uh, that is courtesy of Fox 17 uh, from their morning mix, and it talks about Jubilee jobs, and we're going to continue with this conversation mm -hmm. about uh, social justice and access uh, to justice. You're watching Time to Talk, and today is Wednesday, September 25th. 2019, the year is moving right along. It so it's a great thing. We will be right back. I'm R.G. Howard.
Talk. I'm Margie Hallman, and today is Wednesday, September 25th, 2019, and we're live once again. And we're live every second and fourth Wednesday, 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. right here on GRTV, Comcast Cable 25. And then you can see us again if you live in Wyoming, Kentwood, Gaines Township. You can see us on the following Wednesdays, um, 2 p.m. and 8 p.m. on WKTV, Comcast Cable 25. So be sure to watch, and you can check us on YouTube, too. So if you something you missed, you can go back and get it. Okay, so we're talking to Marsha Osborne from Jubilee Jobs, Dr. Bruce Roller from UCOM, and Kamal uh, Standerford from WMU Cooley Law University. And um, Dr. Roller, you do a lot of things to help people with their nutrition, but you also help people with financial literacy mm -hmm. and some other program, wellness programs yep. and things like that, some wraparound services. Tell us Definitely. about Definitely. You know, not everybody can get um, their records expunged, mm -hmm. as Kamala right, right, said. Right, right. And mm -hmm. the importance of UCOM, you know, we're thinking about social justice in the realm of just leveling the playing field, letting everybody have an equitable chance mm -hmm. to, to get mm -hmm. their, their thing done, to have their life and mm -hmm. to have some joy mm -hmm. in life. And so that's um, where we come in with our workforce development piece um, that works with a lot of ex-offenders and a lot of other people that have various barriers to employment. And so what we, are some of those barriers? Language barriers, gender inequity, racial inequity, um, the recent um, spate of immigration mm -hmm. troubles and, and problems that have arisen. Um, these, all of these things uh, have a tendency to make some people unequal, less equal mm -hmm. than, than others. Mm -hmm. And so we um, at UCOM have a coach, a job coach who meets with people, anybody who comes in with an appointment and will sit with her and decide their, their dream job, <laughs> the goals that they have to establish. They set their own goals. What do you have to do to get to that point? You need some training to be able to get there. And the video that, that we will have um, talks specifically about one of the people and all the barriers that that she had and how wonderfully she's been able to overcome those things. Because the hero of our stories, mm -hmm. all of these stories, mm -hmm. are the people that take action and really go to work to, to make a difference in their lives, to make a change in their lives. So we have, for instance, one of the things that would happen with an ex-offender who comes to us uh, is if they have to check that box, then mm -hmm. um, our job coach works with them with an mock interviews and conversation about how to tell your prospective employer about, you know, honestly facing what has mm -hmm. happened to you in your life, but then um, moving on to cast that new vision of what you want your life to be like. Mm -hmm. And so we, we do a lot of of that piece and usually while we're doing that it takes a while for people to get to the point mm -hmm. that they can support themselves support their families and so that's where a lot of the food comes in we have clothing for the whole family we have all kinds of of wraparound services that help these folks get through the time till they can get where they want to be Okay. And then when it comes to checking those boxes about have you ever been convicted uh, of a felony or anything like that, many times you, if a person checks that box, they go into what we all know as file 13. Mm -hmm. You know, it's in the trash before you can even have a conversation mm -hmm. uh, with someone. What do, you, what do you tell people about that? Generally, I think just as a rule of thumb is, yeah, you can go ahead and, and check the box, but below that or right around that, 
say I welcome the opportunity mm -hmm. to talk about okay. the circumstances mm -hmm. around this and what's changed. Okay. And do you also help develop employment opportunities for people who may have barriers, you know, whether it may be immigration issues or criminal issues, or you help develop felon friendly uh, work sites? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but there are a number of employers that mm -hmm. work with us or with our partners, um, wide range of partners um, that are willing to um, give somebody a second chance, give somebody an additional chance, and so um, we certainly, if that's the area that that person wants to go into, then we recommend that to them. Or mm -hmm. if they have some bigger plan in mind um, with maybe somebody that wouldn't be so friendly, then we try to line them up with folks um, so that they can have that entry level position and get that uh, recommendation that referral mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on their resume mm -hmm. so that they can tell the tell the story okay okay good we have a video uh, with okay. you in it mm -hmm. and then we're gonna have a show a video mm -hmm. also uh, with my, well uh, about Jubilee job yes. mm -hmm. uh, in it but we have a video with you dr. roller and we're going to try to show that video now but as we get ready to show it tell us what we're going to see. Oh, easy enough. This was a, a one minute video talking about the impact that we have. That's Jubilee's. Okay. Oh, that's, that's the, it. no, that's Jubilee Jobs. Oh, okay. So <laughs> maybe okay. we want to introduce that's Jubilee okay. Jobs. That's all right. <laughs> we can work with that. Wonderful. Slide partner. TV, yeah. we work with that. Absolutely. Wonderful. Okay. So this video, sure. Fox 17, mm -hmm. came out to Jubilee Jobs. They did. It was, it was an amazing experience and um, we're going to see Randy Otterbridge. Okay. Uh, he is our development advisor okay. at Jubilee Jobs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. sure. Good. Okay, All right. let's, let's see this video now. Okay, thank Welcome you. Welcome back. Finding a pathway to prosperity can be a challenge, but this it's is even harder of for those who start out with a lack of a high school diploma or have spent time in the criminal justice system, but there is a place where barriers to living the American dream they can be removed. Yeah, it's called Jubilee Jobs, and it's a nonprofit who walks alongside individuals looking to better their circumstances by getting that. GED or that criminal record expunged. On this Motivational Monday, we paid them a visit to learn more. Take a look. Uh, Jubilee Jobs GR is a nonprofit organization that has been around for 30 years. And we've been helping people get jobs. We've been helping people get their GEDs. We've been helping people try to find that pathway to prosperity so they can go on to college, they can go on to workforce opportunities. We are, are now introducing some of our other areas, our access to justice, where we help people expunge their criminal records. Again, with the idea that we're helping people build a pathway to prosperity by reducing some of the barriers that have been affecting folks, not having a GED, having criminal um, things on their background. So what we've been doing here Again, lately we've been really emphasizing the GED program because we have been finding that a lot of people, as jobs start closing, what they've been finding is now that they don't have their education, they couldn't go to the next step and get into other work opportunities. We have found that the people that have been coming in to get the GED program have been African American, Hispanic, uh, and other ethnic people within this neighborhood. And what they, we've been finding is those are the folks that have been having trouble transitioning to some of the higher education opportunities because they didn't have their GED or they had criminal things on their background. We've had about 5,800 people that are coming in for testing. We've had over 72 people come through for GED, 24 graduates. 55% have been African American. Then we have another 30% that have been Hispanic and then across different ethnic groups. Well, think about a cafeteria. In a cafeteria, you don't you go through the line and you can pick what you want, right? So when we have our participants come in, they can actually pick where they need to start in their GED process. 
because we found that it's been a 10th grade average when people were like getting out of school and because they had to go to work or whatever it took, right? So what we found is that when they come in, they may not need one subject because they have the opportunity to test out of it. They've been good in social studies or they've been good in math, so they don't have to take that. GED Cafe allows them to take what they need. They can pick from the menu, if you will. They literally just have to call in and come in and talk with Dawn or talk with Lynette and they can start the program because we're year round. Pearson View, an educational company, what they do is they test along a wide range of uh, certifications. You may need a Microsoft certification. I think we just did one for Amazon, being a, uh, being a person that is certified to do a certain thing within Amazon. So you can come in, take the test right here at Jubilee. So the criminal expungement, right? So there is um, some information that has come out that suggests that if it's not of a certain type of criminal activity, you can have those expunged from your record. Welcome back to Time to Talk, and we want to thank Fox 17 for uh, that video clip of Jubilee Jobs. And we have Marsha Osborne, the Executive Director of Jubilee Jobs. You want to talk just a little bit about what we just saw with sure. Randy Otterbridge? Yes, Randy Otterbridge, uh, Jubilee uh, Jobs, our development advisor. And um, we had an opportunity to welcome Fox 17 uh, morning mix out for their motivational Monday and our focus was um, on uh, two of our services we have many but two of our services our GED cafe our GED prep program and then also um, legal clinics in collaboration with uh, WMU Cooley Law School so that mm -hmm. was our main focus of the clip Okay, great. And I, I noticed on, on Randy's laptop where it talked about a suit drive. You also help people with clothing to prepare for their interviews well, or maybe even beyond their job. Yeah, so this was, um, we just celebrated our 10th year as um, a nonprofit partner with the Men's Warehouse. It's a national. Thank you. That's a big game. Yeah, so <laughs> it's a, a national suit drive. Um, there are currently three nonprofit partners in Michigan, and we are one of those three. So in July, um, we have the Suit Drive, uh, both the 28th Street store and the Rivertown uh, Crossings men, uh, Men's Warehouse uh, stores. Welcome back. And Finding individuals bring in their gently loved and in fashion suits button downs, ties, shoes, belts, uh, it's interview clothing, uh, also work clothing. Uh, we receive uh, over 800 pieces a year and we actually share with our partner at UCOM uh, the uh, clothing from the suit drive. So okay, so people can go to the stores and pick out the clothing? Uh, they actually come right to Jubilee Jobs. Oh, okay, that's uh, the, more convenient for yeah, many Yeah, we people. have what we call a strong suit locker for men. Okay. And then our partner, Yukon, um, Bruce, you also have a, a clothing locker. I don't know if yeah. that's what you call it at Yukon. No. Well, yeah, we call it uh, Dress for Success, our, mm -hmm. it, which is the kind of uh, clothes that you would want to wear to a mm -hmm. job interview or maybe that first week or two weeks on the job that mm -hmm. uh, you can't Until you get your paycheck. Get that paycheck. Right. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's it's wonderful and thank you Marsha. I appreciate your uh, generosity mm -hmm. and sharing with us because mm -hmm. um, that's it's really how we do everything mm -hmm. that we do mm -hmm. is, is doing it together. Sure. And that really mm -hmm. makes a difference for people because First impressions are the last mm -hmm. oh, impressions. Absolutely. So you want to be dressed nice for the interview. You also want to be dressed nice, you know, mm -hmm. the first few weeks on the on the job. Well, even after that, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. if you don't have anything, it's very difficult to, you know, maybe dress the way that's expected of you. Mm -hmm. um, do you also have women's clothes or not yet? Uh, we do not at Jubilee Jobs. Um, we refer individuals to the Women's Resource Center, mm -hmm. another one of our partner mm -hmm. agencies, yeah. um, and then also um, refer over to UCOM 
because UConn um, provides clothing for the family. Okay, mm -hmm. and at UConn, Dr. Roller, uh, where are you located? We're at 1311 Chicago Drive Southwest, which is just down Granville Avenue. <laughs> it turns into <laughs> Chicago Drive just mm -hmm. as you go into Wyoming, and so that's, um, that's where we are. We spent 20 years at the corner of Hall and Granville mm -hmm. in a little church basement. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, 15 years ago, we moved out to, uh, to the new address, much larger building, bigger parking lot, and um, are able to serve a lot more people more comfortably, more efficiently than we could whenever we were in that wonderful and blessed space in the basement of the church. <laughs> yes, so you've grown over the, oh, the years indeed. and everything. So, <coughs> excuse me. So when you have uh, your wraparound services, do you sit down with people, find out what is it that they need? Or sometimes do people walk in and say, what do you all do here? Yeah, most people um, that, that come to our other services, unless they're referred, uh, come for food. And that's a wonderful touchstone because they know they can get food there for their family, but then they see all the other things that we do. They see mm -hmm. the board that talks about our employment and, and that's when they can make an appointment to sit down with our job coach and, and go through um, all of those important pieces for getting work done. Um, we also have questions for folks when they just come for food, trying to probe to see if mm -hmm. there's more mm -hmm. that we can do that, that will help them to get through the tough spot yeah. till they find the other side. Yeah, mm -hmm. and just like Jubilee Jobs and Cooley Law School, you partner uh, with other people. Um, so you partner with Farmer's Market and get food that's left from the farmer's market? We do, we, we work with um, Heartside Gleaning Initiative mm -hmm. um, that gets food from the Fulton Street Farmer's Market at the end of their time, uh, at the, uh, like on Saturday afternoon, the food that didn't sell, just picked that day, comes to UCOM and several other mm -hmm. um, social services agencies um, and that doesn't go on our farm stand. That most goes into our free pantry. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you can get farm fresh food if you get there at the right time. Yeah. <laughs> you can get farm I mean, fresh food. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Farm fresh food um, for for free for you okay. and your whole family. That's great. So Kamal, uh, back mm -hmm. to the expungement. Um, mm -hmm. Just going through your eye chat and finding out what your status is is first and paying your fee mm -hmm. but then what are the steps what's going to happen um, because it is a process sure sure so the next step is actually filing the paperwork that you need to file in order to um, set up a hearing and getting and get in front of a judge so there is an application to set aside that we uh, help people fill out they would fill that document out um, there is a, you have to get a certified record of the conviction from the court which convicted you. Um, so you would have to get that. That normally costs $10. Um, there is a fingerprint card that you also have to get. Um, you can go to your local police station, um, let them know that you're, you're in the process of filing for an expungement and you need to have your fingerprints taken. Do you have to go through the court where you were convicted? Correct. Okay. So um, mm -hmm. when, when you do ultimately file, you oftentimes you appear in front of the judge that convicted you for that offense. Mm -hmm. Unless that judge is retired or deceased, then it's assigned to a new judge. Okay. Can you do more than one offense at a time, or can you group them together? Well, uh, and I'm glad you, you brought that up. Be, uh, my earlier example, um, that person had one felony and two misdemeanors, and the law says that you can potentially expunge the felony offense. So under that scenario, that person could only expunge the felony offense, assuming they've also satisfied the five-year wait period as well. 
Um, but there is another section of the statute that simply deals with misdemeanors. So if somebody doesn't have any felonies, felonies and they simply have misdemeanor convictions, the law allows that person to potentially expunge two mm -hmm. misdemeanors, assuming they have no more than two misdemeanor offenses uh, on their record. Um, and then assuming that those misdemeanor offenses are expungeable offenses, so they're not traffic offenses or, um, you know, CSCs, anything like that. Um, and then assuming they've also satisfied the five year wait period, which we talked about earlier, that person can potentially expunge both uh, of their misdemeanor offenses. Mm -hmm. When you get your uh, criminal record expunged, what shows up? Nothing? Nothing. About the crime? That, that, that's correct. So one of the things we do, um, once everything, you know, assuming everything goes uh, well, um, after the expungement, we normally wait about a month to call the client back in to run a new eye chat to make sure that the conviction has been removed mm -hmm. from their record because um, even if the judge grants the expungement um, it still has to be you know sent to various legal entities um, law enforcement entities before the conviction is officially removed from that person's record so we always tell people, even when they get the expungement, don't apply for jobs right away because the conviction is likely it still, might on, still be on, there. On, on, okay. the, on the uh, job. Do you ever have people concerned that, well, if I go to the clinic, the right. Access to Justice Clinic, mm -hmm. to get my records expunged, ooh, I didn't know I had a warrant. And I, mm -hmm. am I going to be arrested mm -hmm. yeah. right there on the yeah. spot? Um, well. First of all, they won't be arrested on the spot. <laughs> I, I can tell you that. Um, mm -hmm. We would obviously, in that scenario, encourage that person to um, take care of, of it as best as they can. Um, you know, and you know that's just a, a part of life. Sometimes people genuinely don't realize that they have these outstanding issues. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so, yeah. Okay. Can you tell us any stories? Of and everything is confidential. Sure, sure. Um, but can you tell us any stories about how somebody's life w was changed, mm -hmm. like Marcia told us, mm -hmm. by having their records expunged? Yeah, I mean, I can think of a number of stories. Um, I can think of one story, a lady had a conviction from, I believe it was in 1980s. Um, and you know, once the conviction was removed, she started crying. Um, she's very emotional. Mm -hmm. And and I think from mm -hmm. her perspective, it wasn't necessarily um, the idea that now she could find better jobs or housing. It was, it was more about removing a weight off of her shoulder, mm -hmm. um, trying to move past that entire incident. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, these pe the people that we come across um, are good people who may have uh, made mistakes in the past and they're trying to move on in a, in a positive direction. Mm -hmm. And uh, having this conviction removed is kind of the last step in, in moving on from whatever transpired, whenever it transpired. Mm -hmm. so, okay, yeah. good. <laughs> I, I just wanted, to, I, when we're talking about lives being changed, mm -hmm. um, I. Mm -hmm concisely tell the story um, on the on the video clip of the person who started mm -hmm. in our financial literacy class almost on a whim and wound up with a completely transformed for the better life. Mm -hmm. Great. Let's see that video now. <laughs> that was a great lead, Dr. Bruce. <laughs> great, yeah. <laughs> okay. So let's see that video now. Uh, we saw that one. There's another video with Dr. <laughs> Bruce in it. So we're going to go to that. And while we're going to that, uh, you're watching Time to Talk. I'm sorry, R.D., that video will not play. Oh, OK. okay. All right. But it's on our website at www.ucomgr.org. 
Okay, and what are your hours there at UCOM? We have uh, nine to five, Monday through Thursday, our offices are open. And um, on Fridays when we're closed, um, we have staff there from nine to noon at least. So, and then uh, the pantry itself is open 21 hours a week, including mm -hmm. a nighttime opening. It's open mm -hmm. till 7.30 on Thursdays. Oh, that's helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's people that so work that's good. That's can good. get a chance mm -hmm. to come. You have a million dollar event coming yes. up in October. <laughs> yes. A million dreams, <laughs> night okay. of a million dreams okay. coming up October uh, 23. Um, at the Eberhardt Center, it's a, it's an adult carnival, not a triple X, the no, other kind of adult, uh, with all kinds of, there are games and barkers, there's a juggler who's mm -hmm. going to um, help tell the story of what it's like to try to juggle all those bills and all those financial mm -hmm. hurdles uh, right. that we can share. Um, there are, is a strolling dinner and lots of um, lots of entertainment there, there are games that uh, people can play the games uh, cost ten dollars to play but every game is a winner every everything we've got hundreds of wonderful prizes okay. wonderful. Uh, all kinds of, of of things like hotel stays and um, jewelry, it's a beautiful diamond bracelet is one oh, of those, wow. all kinds of wonderful um, prizes for folks and all of the money goes of course to UCOM's okay. programming um, so you're helping that out and as our development director mm -hmm. pointed out she's going to do all her Christmas shopping there, she's yeah. going to play, <laughs> play $10 games mm -hmm. and get $100 prizes oh, wow. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. to be able to there give to her friends. That sounds like mm -hmm. a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. What's a strolling dinner? It's, it's heavy hors d'oeuvres, okay. good, good, <laughs> good hors d'oeuvres that, that yeah. you can have all during the Okay, during sounds the, like a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, and Marcia, is there anything else that you want to share? about Jubilee Jobs and also share the contact information too. Yeah, sure. So uh, we are located on the third floor of the Baxter Community Center. Uh, that's 935 Baxter Street Southeast. Uh, our front entrance to the Community Center is on Venus. Okay. Yep. And um, our web website is uh, jubileejobsgr.org. O R G, mm -hmm. and um, through our our website, uh, individuals can um, click the little Facebook icon and also see um, feed on our website our recent Facebook feed. So and you serve all of Grand Rapids. But we we serve anyone who comes to our door. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, primarily Grand and Rapids, phone number? Kent County. Sure. Um, area code 616-774-9944. Okay, yes. all right. And Kamal uh, Standiford, tell us one more time about the expungement clinic, the special one that's going to happen, because usually you have that at Jubilee Jobs, yep. and you'll get back to that, and yeah. people can see that on the website. But Very tell us good. one more time about the expungement uh, clinic and anything else you want to say about WMU Cooley Law School. Sure. So um, this week happens to be National Expungement Week. Mm -hmm. um, and with that in mind, the Black and Brown Cannabis Guild um, has put on an event. There's a young lady by the name of uh, Denavia Moje and uh, Ariana Waller. Uh, they've both been instrumental in, in putting on this event. Uh, the idea is to have a uh, community event which involves uh, expungement screening um, and WMU Cooley has partnered with them along with Link. Link was um, kind enough to um, give us space to have this event um, this Saturday and the idea is to screen people to determine whether or not they're eligible under the expungement statute. Mm -hmm. um, and the one thing I, I would definitely want to point out is, you know, the expungement process is, it's a, it's a privilege and not a right. Mm -hmm. 
So even if that person is eligible under the expungement statute, um, there is no guarantee that the expungement will be granted by the judge. Um, the judge will look at that person's post-conviction behavior mm -hmm. before Tell making that determination. Tell us a little bit more about that. What sure. are they looking for? So um, generally, some type of, uh, they want to see remorse. Um, they want to see that the person has moved uh, their life in a positive direction. Um, you know, they want to see that that person is no longer uh, a threat to the public. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, they're looking to see if this person is a good citizen. Correct. You know, they're involved in the community. In they have a family. Volunteers. They're volunteering. Yes. Church or Correct. Uh, helping other people and being, doing good. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, mm -hmm. I want to thank all of you for being with me mm -hmm. on Time to Talk, and I hope you come back from time to time and keep us updated with oh. what you're doing. So thank you, Marsha Osborne, Dr. Bruce Roller, and Kamal Standerford. Thank you all. Mm -hmm. thank and you. good luck with everything that you're doing. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank, thank you. you. Mm -hmm. yep. You've been watching Time to Talk. We'll see you in two weeks. <laughs>